Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where today we are discussing this man on screen here, Marcus Rashford. I want to talk about where I think he kind of fits into the Manchester United team moving forward because he has had a little bit of criticism in pre-season which sounds kind of daft because I mean, are you forgetting his numbers from last season? 41 goal contributions in just 56 games, 30 goals in all contribution. Uh, 30 goals in all competitions, I should say. He was absolutely brilliant last season and genuinely fired United to the top four, fired them so deep in all of those cup competitions, including the Carabao Cup, which Manchester United went on to win, of course. Marcus Rashford was genuinely phenomenal last season. However, this year, pre-season is the most scrutinised pre-season in history, in my opinion. I have never seen pre-season for Manchester United, but also other teams kind of looked into in such a deep analytical way, myself included really, in that. So I want to figure out kind of based on pre-season what we can take from Marcus Rashford moving forward. So we need the tactical board for that of course which is now loading here. Now we need to take Hoyland out of the team because at the time of recording he hasn't signed although I think by the time this is uploaded he will have. But let's start with what Marcus Rashford has been doing in pre-season where he has often been used as a striker. So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, jerseyfifa.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone and now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. Now, in my opinion, Marcus Rashford isn't a striker that isn't his best position, but we will come on to that a bit later because this has been where he's been playing in pre-season. So we need to talk about what he offers from this position. I think the most obvious thing he offers is pace and bags of it. Bags of speed, pace, runs in behind the defence. So when United are in deeper areas and the opposition are forcing a little bit higher with a high line, trying to put United under pressure... We know that all day long, Marcus Rashford will offer this ball in behind, this threat in behind the defence from a long ball over the top, either from the goalkeeper, a centre-back, a midfielder, anyone. Marcus Rashford is always looking to play on the shoulder. On top of this, he also offers the ability to move laterally across the lines. So not just moving vertically in behind, but also moving from side to side to create overloads. Particularly when he plays up, to, uh, up front, he likes to drop to this left side position where United can therefore create overloads with Marcus Rashford and perhaps someone like Alejandro Garnacho going two versus one versus the fullback. And I mean, I don't know a, a fullback in world football which can deal with that because that is a terrifying prospect and it makes Manchester United really dangerous. Rashford can also do the same on the other side as well. I would argue he isn't quite as effective from the right-hand side. However, he is still very capable of moving into these positions, creating overloads and allowing United to attack in that way. I also think last season we, we saw an improvement in his, not false nine, but kind of hold up play at times. He still isn't someone where he can go long to his chest, but we did see last season him starting to develop into someone where you can go into his feet and he's going to hold the ball up a bit better than he used to and then bring others into play, so he offers that as well. But I think the big thing he kind of improved last season was his play in and around the penalty area. His finishing was clearly very, very good. If not, he wouldn't have hit these numbers last year. Again, 30 goals in all competitions is a really, really good return in a team which was by no means complete and played really poor football at times. United relied on Marcus Rashford and that's because he really improved his finishing ability. I think he also improved his movement in the box thanks to the coach Benny McCarthy. So when the ball was out wide and looking to be delivered into the centre, Marcus Rashford was better with his movement and also better with his heading. And all round, he developed massively as a striker last season in my opinion. Now in my opinion, all of those things are genuinely true. I do believe that Rashford improved in all of those areas last season. However, for me, he still isn't a number 9. Now, a couple of reasons for that. Whilst his link play may have improved, I still don't think he is great at it. We take the pre-season game against Real Madrid, for example. Real Madrid used a diamond, like this in midfield, which meant that United struggled to get the ball to Rashford. Rashford didn't really do enough to kind of make himself involved in the game, and I don't think this is a strength of his. He did improve last season in this area, but he still isn't a hold-up or a linking striker, which would be a concern. I also just don't think he has the natural movement in and around the penalty area. Again, he massively improved in that area last season, as I was discussing but I still don't think it suits him. You don't get enough touches as a striker. Marcus Rashford is a player which wants to be involved in the play. He doesn't get that in the box, and I think that is a problem. A lot of the time, because he wants touches, you will see him leaving the striker position, which leaves United without a focal point in the middle. 
So, moving forward, could Marcus Rashford play up front this season? Yeah, I think he could. I think he would do a good job there, he would hit a lot of goals once again. But I think there would be too many games where he isn't effective enough. However, I would expect him to play some games up front, because I think if Rasmus Hoyland has signed for the club by now, or is about to, he probably isn't ready to start 60 games. So Rashford will have to play some up front. However, I still don't think it is ideal for the reasons that we've discussed. So the other option is for him to play as a left winger, and have Rasmus Hoyland up front. Now like I said, this wouldn't be the case in every game, there would be games with Rashford up top. But Rashford on the left hand side offers you something a little bit different. Now the big thing which Marcus Rashford offers you when he moves out wide rather than being in the middle, is quite simple really, it's more touches on the ball. We know that in pretty much every team in the world currently, wingers have more touches than the striker, it's just kind of how football works. So Marcus Rashford would benefit from moving to the left wing in this way because he would get more touches. As a result of getting more touches, he's got more chance to use his brilliant dribbling ability. When he's inside in situations like this, he gets too crowded out, he kind of runs into uh, dead ends basically and loses the ball. On the left hand side, when he can get himself one versus one against a fullback, he is so underrated in this department. People give him a lot of criticism for his dribbling ability. I think when he's sharp, he's actually one of the best one versus one dribblers. Now, when he's sharp is the emphasis there, he's not always on it. But when he is at his best, I genuinely think he is, he's phenomenal in these areas. His one versus one ability is really, really good. He's terrifying. His speed, his size, but also his ability to throw in a little skill, even if it is just a flip flap, for example, makes him so dangerous. And it allows him to get into the final third. And it makes him a really good method of ball progression for Manchester United. The other benefit of Marcus Rashford on the left wing is that it drags other people over because people don't want to be left one versus one. So if an extra defender is being brought over, that means room is being made somewhere else for someone else. I also think Rashford from this area is just so good at cutting inside onto that right foot of his, cutting into these areas and firing shots at goal. And what it does is it gives United a different goal scoring outlet. Typically in a football team, of course, the striker scores the most goals. Not always, but typically. If you can also add a goal scorer from a different position, like Marcus Rashford perhaps on the left hand side, it gives United a different goal scoring outlet, which again is another reason why I think Rashford is better on the left. Of course, importantly, playing on the left, you still get that threat of those runs in behind. I mean, how many times in his career so far have we seen Rashford start on the left-hand side, someone deep will have the ball, and Rashford makes this bending run in behind the defence like this, gets in behind, and once again scores goals. That is certainly something which Rashford can do. However, in terms of being an out-and-out -out winger, he perhaps isn't quite what Ten Hag normally goes for. If we look at Anthony on the right-hand side, he is much more of a retention player, someone who slows it down a little bit, looks to keep the ball for his side before keeping things a little bit safer. Sometimes too safe, yes, but he's just a very different style to what Marcus Rashford is on the left-hand side. And the fact that Ten Hag was willing to spend close to 100 million euros on Anthony on the right wing suggests that is actually perhaps the profile he prefers a little bit more. Someone who's a bit more of a retention winger, keeps the ball, progresses the ball for his side, works hard off the ball as well of course, but importantly, he's providing a whip for the attack and is often an outlet. Marcus Rashford doesn't do that in the same way, so is Marcus Rashford a winger either? Because he isn't someone who particularly wants to go down the outside of defenders for example and swing crosses into the box. He's also not that creative, he has moments where he puts deliveries in but it's not really his game in general. He is always looking to cut inside. And I think this is why people are a little bit confused over Marcus Rashford. People kind of can't quite figure out what his best position is moving into this season because as a, a wide player perhaps he doesn't retain the ball well enough, doesn't cross the ball well enough, but as a striker he perhaps isn't the, the focal point and that box poacher. So people are unsure as to how you get the best out of him. But again, what we look to do on the AJ Analysis channel is bring clarity. Not make assumptions, but bring clarity. Because I think if you actually look at Manchester United's preseason so far, there are clear indicators on how it could really work for Manchester United and Marcus Rashford this season. And the reason for that is because of Manchester United's build-up structure so far in preseason has often been a back three and then often a one in front of them. But more interestingly, it's the personnel picking up these positions, and it's the fact that it isn't fixed. For example, at times we're seeing Manchester United build up possession in a 3-1 shape, which looks a little, bit, a little bit like this, for example. You've got one of the fullbacks deep, one of the midfielders playing as a pivot, the other fullback is much higher. But then in another situation, we will see it change. We'll see it uh, with a midfielder dropping deeper, something like this. Casemiro will be in this position here. 
However, one thing we aren't seeing too much in preseason is Luke Shaw being part of the back three. It's happening in moments, of course it is. Football is a, a constantly moving game. Players pick up different positions all the time. But in terms of a main theme or a main pattern of the game, Luke Shaw does not seem to be the one, in my opinion, which is regularly forming a back three. He seems a little bit higher. Now, what is the effect of having Luke Shaw a little bit higher? The effect of Luke Shaw higher is the, the potential for rotations it gives other players. Now, when Luke Shaw plays higher, he isn't just going to play high and wide. So sometimes he will underlap into these positions, which means Marcus Rashford is responsible for playing on the left wing. But the, the point is, that is okay in moments. Marcus Rashford is more than capable in spells of games playing wide on the left. The whole idea is that you don't just want to isolate him purely to that. But that's the important thing with Ten Hag's football in preseason. Players are not fixed. Luke Shaw is also making overlapping runs in preseason, which allows the left winger to come inside. And I think from this position, you get the best of Marcus Rashford. You have a position where he can still get plenty of touches on the ball, more than what he would up front. But also, he isn't asked to stay out wide. He's asked to get inside and shoot at goal, an inside forward position. This is what Ten Hag looks like. At times, he is kind of creating for Marcus Rashford. Also the potential, I think, even to move into these positions. Again, this is a, a rotational situation. It isn't always like this. But again, Ten Hag has got United in, at times, a shape which looks like a 3-4-3 diamond. I've discussed it already this uh, preseason, which has constantly players moving about, which does involve someone like Marcus Rashford occasionally moving into this position, occasionally out wide, occasionally in the inside channel. I think that is genuinely how Ten Hag is looking to get the best out of him. I think something else which proves that that might be the idea is actually the signing of Mason Mount, because Mason Mount is such a versatile player, a player who suits this left-hand side rotation perfectly. He is capable of pushing into the half space and letting Rashford play wide, very capable of doing that. He's also very capable of dropping deeper, letting Luke Shaw push forward and let Marcus Rashford come inside. Mason Mount has done this all before. I discussed it in the video where he signed for the club, but also what we discussed is his ability to move wider. And that is something which in kind of rotation in certain scenarios allows Marcus Rashford once again to come inside. And again, it's all about rotations. It's really Ten Hag's philosophy, occupying zones, but with different players to offer different threats. For me, that is why I think Marcus Rashford could really work for Ten Hag this season. I have had question marks myself over, is he really a Ten Hag profile? But we saw the quotes the other day and we discussed it in a video. Ten Hag wants this to be the best transitional team in the world. Who is genuinely one of the best transitional players in the world? Well, it is this guy on screen here, and I'm not talking about me. I'm really not that good. Marcus Rashford, though, is tremendous in transition. He is so, so good. And I think Eric Ten Hag genuinely wants to build the team around him. It's why he was given such a big contract. So I understand concern, right? Marcus Rashford isn't the retention player which some other players in the team are, and he has areas he needs to improve. His decision-making does still need to be a little bit better of when to take a player on, when to fire a shot off, and also when to keep it simple and pass to someone else. But I do think that it could work in this system. If other players can especially learn to be a bit more patient on the ball, if players like Mason Mount, Bruno Fernandes and Casemiro in particular can really uh, assert control on games, it could give Marcus Rashford the ability this season to maybe be even better than last season. Now, I'm not saying that as a guarantee because this is just my interpretation. Ten Hag might have a slightly different plan. But in my view, in my opinion, it really could work for Rashford this season. But that's my opinion. I want to hear yours. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I know Rashford is a player which splits opinion because from the statistical point of view and even at times watching him, he isn't the most aesthetic player. He isn't the most efficient player. But I tell you what, he is dangerous. He is so, so dangerous. And sometimes in football, it's a right having these nice, perfect patterns. Sometimes you need someone who can get the ball and do something out of nothing. No matter your opinion, you cannot argue that Marcus Rashford does that because he done it about 41 times last season in all competitions. So that's my uh, point of view on it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.